Service I am voice. the worst when it comes to customer service. Are you kidding me? I am the worst. But we are live. What's up, everyone? Hello. Show number 31 with a different name again. Because we, can. we, can't, we can't keep our names. And we're probably going to change it again at some point. No, 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 no. This is it. We are not changing the name again. Like, I just gave in because I got tired of fighting with Facebook and I just kept fighting with them because I just could. I want, you know, just to prove a point, but I was like, you know what? I don't have time to fight, fight with Facebook. I need to like take care of, you know, my shit then deal with something that, you know, it's not really that important. It was just funny. It's just petty and annoying and it's like, deny, okay, appeal, appeal, appeal. Yeah, appeal. and then you ask them why and it, they just give you a can answer. That's what pisses me off the most. Like as someone who runs so much advertising through them, you know, well, they did give me a rep before and I fired him because they didn't know anything. But that was a while back. I'm like, let me talk to someone, right? And just they just no. don't. So yeah, that got me suck. going today. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about fun stuff. So, Aww. oh, man, so much stuff to talk about. So, yes, this is the name, the Chris and Shannon Show. That's it. No more meat and potatoes. Simple. No more. I don't know. We've been point. through like three of them, but that's it. Simple to the point, and and it's done. It is what it is. It's not gonna be changed. So I'm sure you saw it change a million times in your, you know, uh, iTunes and Google Cast and all that other shit. Sorry, but this is it. I promise you, it won't change again. The logo has been changed for like the third time. I do promise you, the logo is going to change. I literally just threw that together in ten minutes just to put it on there. So because I, I think it's a shitty logo, but that's not my main focus right now to deal with so staying like that maybe it'll stay as a crappy logo for the rest of the life the life of this thing i don't know it's kind of i mean it's catchy for a logo it's just it is what it is it's like the it's anderson whole. cooper show yeah you know, no i'm talking about the actual logo not the name the name is the name yeah right. no so I mean, anyway so much to talk about this week man there's so much going on i cut up with a bunch of shit too like pop culture shit yeah i needed to do uh uh, meme research, you know, yeah. I kept seeing all these memes about how do you pronounce it? Thanos, 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 Thanos. is it Thanos? I really Probably. have no idea. Me neither. So, you know, everybody makes like a huge deal out of this Marvel DC movies or whatever. And I was like, all right, I have to watch it because I see the memes everywhere. So basically I have to see what the memes are all about. Right. Which I really had a pretty good idea. So I sat through it. Holy shit. That was one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. If you're over Which 12 one? years, uh, Avengers, the last one, whatever. I don't even remember the name. That's how bad it was. Um, Not into it. Avengers, whatever last Avenger movies. One of the know. Avengers. Yeah, the last one. The last one that came out. Where, like, they just, every single cartoon character had sex and just ended up in one movie and multiplied. And it's just, like. It's horrible. There's no story. It's bland. If you're over 12 years old, you're one of those dudes that's all about it. Get the fuck out of here. Like, grow the fuck up. Seriously, that was a horrible movie. It's so fucking bad that I was falling asleep like 10 times through it. And it was like two and a half hours long on top of it. And then everything's purple. Everything's pink. Like, why is everything in the world is purple and pink in the universe? Like, it just drove me fucking absolutely insane. And then the horrible CGI with the horrible CGI fights. Like, <sighs> Like, seriously, people, this is what we have come down to. Like, if you're over 12, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to hear about those stupid movies anymore. Like, and if that's your particular niche and that, that's your thing, that's fine. But, I mean, I haven't seen them, so I guess my opinion doesn't really hold much weight. Save but your time. it just seems, like, so commercial. And it's not, like, authentic comic book stuff. It is super commercial. It's super dumbed down commercial. It's for kids. It's for kids. Like if you're 12 year and you say, you know, if it was my kid, which I don't have kids and, and you know, he's like 10 or 11 and said, dad, the Avengers are awesome. Like, let's go watch the movie 10 times. I will do it for the kid because as a kid, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's fun because I don't know any better, you know, you smack them until they learn better quality. Right. Movies but you, you see all these people like, Oh my God, that was the best DC movie or Marvel movie and blah, blah, blah. And they're all geeking out and nerding out on it. And I was just like, it's fucking horrible. Like I watched, I told we talked about this. You watch it too. Upgrade. Like that oh, was yeah. refreshing. That yeah. was a super low budget movie. Super. Like super low budget. You can tell it's super low budget. And that story was a hundred times better than every fucking movie that's been out in the past year in the movie theater. 
That was a really good movie, actually, Upgrade. The only part that like annoyed me throughout the whole movie was for being a movie that is centric on technology. Right. Their technology was so shoddy throughout the whole movie, like their consistency. Like We tried to talk like, about this. On Facebook. What, what were you trying to tell me the other day? Yeah. So, I mean, you have a, a chip. I don't want to ruin the movie, but, you know, it's super high tech, futuristic. You've got like uh, bots that are um, like police officers that can zoom in on your face and see who you are. And surveillance, like drones doing surveillance in the air. And yeah, they can yeah, zoom in. Exactly. All that stuff. Thank right, you. Right. So, but then you have the cops using desktop computers with cords and keyboards with cords and like old school mice or mouses. Well, okay. So this is what I was trying to tell you. So the cop cop, the main cop in the movie, she doesn't like technology and she likes to keep it all analog. That's well, why there's everybody there had an old school setup. Well, I mean, you need a cable. I mean, you don't need, you can have a wireless keyboard and mouse, but I, I don't have a, wireless keyboard and mouse i have mine hooked up for better response times well they didn't even have like modern day cars anymore it was like few and far between they were so rare so for an entire police department not to have any of any new technology and there were a but, couple uh, other spots but i was like stop focusing on that well the the police it's a government office so they probably don't get funding but if you go to the dude's house he was using the keyboard you know, on the table, and it was a hologram. Yeah, okay, whatever. I get what you're saying, but it's like, come on. Okay, all right. So, but it's it was still a good movie. I liked it. Yeah, I that's it what I better. said. It was still a good movie. That was a hundred times better than that crap that I watched that I sat through. That I just finished it just to finish it with that shitty ass ending. I was like, wow, this is the ending. Oh, don't worry, we're coming out with another one. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, why am I not surprised? Like the fifteenth Avengers movie in like the past five years. You know, but it's not a cash cow at all whatsoever. So I mean, I lost track because all of those movies were kind of the same for me. They're all the same. I just that's why I don't watch them anymore. Now, the one that I did that I watched because I wanted to watch it uh, because I didn't like the first one. I thought the first one was super overhyped. It was okay. I didn't think it was that funny, but I watched Deadpool two as well, and that shit was hilarious. Like hilarious. It, it was hilarious. You know me. Like it takes a little bit to make me laugh, like especially with a movie. And it had like a shitload of like one liners in there where I literally laugh out loud, which I <laughs> rarely, rarely do. It was really funny. It was like super witty uh type of comedy and I liked it a lot. You know, it was still, you know, comic book type of deal, but I thought it was awesome. It was really cool. I liked it. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend you see it. You'll like it too. I haven't. I might have to check that out because I don't find Ryan Reynolds to be, I mean, he's funny, but he's like um, the designer version of Dane Cook to me a little bit. I mean, Dane Cook is like generic cheap Walmart brand. Uh, so, but he's still <laughs> funny. So I but might have to check it out. Dane Cook back in the day was funny. Everybody thought Dane no. Cook was funny. No, everybody thought Dane Cook was a douchebag. Only people who like the chive thought Dane Cook was funny. I thought but he was hilarious. Was Every guy funny. that I knew back in our 20s liked Dane Cook. We thought who he was probably cool. also had a keep calm chive on sticker on their cars. So, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I know one person, <laughs> one mutual friend, yes, that we can. <laughs> uh, that we haven't come on who would do that but no i thought he was funny back in the day but he just kind of died down i don't know i thought he was funny but whatever he, he died into oblivion is he still around does he still He's do comedy fat and i mean i still paparazzi still snap photos of him every once in a while i don't really? know what he's doing so i mean it's like the the z list paparazzi like the ones that can't work for tmz I didn't. I didn't know there was such a thing. I thought they were there just is, like. Yeah. No, you've got to work your way up in the world of paparazzi these days. <laughs> you do. It's yeah, how does do. that work? Yeah. There's a level. You start with like the zealous celebs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think TMZ is one of the as as a paparazzi the end goal. I think that's uh, that's where you want to get to. That's your uh, your goals, your aspirations, aspirations and dreams. Hashtag goals. I'm talking about goals and aspirations. We were arguing about this earlier. So were we arguing? Well, I don't know. Discussing. It was a discussion, I guess. But I was worked up dealing with other shit, so I was already in a bad mood. 
Um, okay, so what were you saying about resources? Oh, about... Okay, like so we were talking about, I go, there was a thread, and I go in, I go, if you want to do something, you know, and follow your passion, you just got to fucking do it on your, you know, on your own time after work or whatever, you know, gotcha. and then build it up and do it. That's what I meant. So. Okay. So, yeah, that first part, there was a, I hate these, like, motivational. I hate motivational. So you know, you know me. I'm not motivational. Yeah, so I'm just like. That's yeah. when you said that. Um when you reference, like, if you work full time and come home and spend, you know, a couple hours a day with your kids, there was some guy that was like, spend two hours a day with your kids. I was like, does this guy literally know any parents? Because there's no parent that can limit their time with kids to two hours a day, unless you're a pretty shitty parent. That does, sound, anyway. <laughs> that does sound like um, like something Gary Vaynerchuk would say, though. I have no idea. These guys are super cheesy to me. They just repeat, like, I don't, live, yeah, laugh, I don't love that. quotes and you know sell, yeah. sell a book on yeah, it. that's how they make their money be, being motivational and 99 percent of them haven't done shit but exactly. sell you the dream yeah so no as far as now Gary Vaynerchuk runs a hundred and something million dollar firm so that's a whole different story but anyway he's mm -hmm. he gets on my nerves too but go ahead so as far as references i mean yeah resources. no i go Sorry, if you want to do it references. i go if you want i'm do trying it. to tell you go ahead i'm um, listening I'm going to reference back to a Dateline special that I watched. So not everybody has the same access to resources. You know, uh, there's plenty of stuff out there online for free that you can mm -hmm. research. Go to the library if you don't have a computer, this and that. But, okay. you know, um, to, back to this Dateline thing we were watching one time. Uh, they showcase seven people living in different stages of poverty from different areas of the you know United States, the suburbs, urban communities, rural communities. Uh, one guy was living in a janitor's closet. He had to bike to a bus stop, then take a two hour bus ride to work. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked weird shifts. So he, and he had to take care of a, a sick, sick parents and then his family, something happened to his wife. She was sick as well. Okay. Uh, they were barely making ends meet. Didn't mm -hmm. have time to go to a local. Well, they didn't have any local libraries in his community, but with his work schedule, traveling, taking care of family, whatnot, uh, you know, there's just no time to get to a library. And then, you know, people who don't have the luxury of having a sitter or family around to help them watch kids, if that's the case, or, you know, work and school schedules. So, I mean, just depending on where you live and. I get what you're saying to a point, but you can still do stuff. It's not going to happen overnight. I never said it Obviously, was easy. Yeah. Some people have it a lot harder than other people. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, like, Dude, everyone has a freaking phone here. Everyone. I see broke people with iPhones all the time. You can make money off your phone. You just got to learn how to do it. And you that's know, the like other that thing. Guy you know, like twelve dollars an hour. He can make a lot more than that just from his phone. He just doesn't know it. You know uh, what I mean? I'm sure he knows it. He just doesn't have the time to learn. You know, the resources to learn. He didn't have a cell phone. The guy that lived in the janitor closet, janitor's closet. But there were like firefighters on the show could not make ends meet work. There was a firefighter, which baffles me, was working three jobs. You would think that a firefighter- no, those are people that live enough. way beyond their fucking means. There's no, no he way. wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't. How is just, you, how, okay, so a firefighter makes at least 50 grand a year, at least. Yeah. Not, yes. no. There, pull, I, it pull it up, because the town that I used to live in, they had volunteer firefighters. Okay, I mean, but that's not, not okay. Why are you about, volunteering? Like, Dallas. Go get fucking paid. Don't waste time volunteering. If you're bitching about not making money, following your passion, why well, are you volunteering? Wasn't don't make a money. volunteer, but some cities don't have. I mean, again, I think you you're maybe not aware of how other people around the world or around the United States at least live. Some cities are so rural they don't have a fire department. So if nobody volunteers, your house is going to burn down. Move. Move. It's not that simple. Why? Why is it not simple? When I moved back from I, Texas to Florida, you know what I did? I got you rid of young, everything. You were young, single. You mm -hmm. know, you didn't have any responsibilities but yourself. You never had right. to take kids. These right. people have families. Even if you, if you, if you are single, I mean. Okay, so if you have that kids, much money, I mean, it's why? just not realistic. There's no point in talking okay. about it. No, but why can you move if you have kids? My parents moved a lot. Well, that was different. We had money. Again, but, they had more resources. Okay, but why can you move if you have if, if you have kids? What what's stopping you from moving if you have kids? Money for one. Resources. Okay, you have money to rent whatever you're living, right? 
How are you going to save up money if you're barely making ends meet as it is? Move to another place where you can get another job or get another How? job before you move. If you can't get another save job money before you move. People do it all the time. If you're barely making ends meet, I mean, then if you move, you have to have first and last month's rent. I mean, it's just simply it's save up. Is it's not that easy. Save up. Cut if off. If you're living shit. check to cable. check and you're not living with any luxuries as it is. Listen, I mean, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck because they spend money on shit that they don't need. And a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck with things, I mean, the bare minimum, and they still aren't making it. That's just reality. I did see, um, I'll give you that, because I did see um, Morgan Spurlock. He had that show on CNN. It's it's on Netflix. There were lots, like, like 30 days. And it 30 was days, that's it, 30 yeah. days. And he did, by the way, firefighter median salary around the country is 46,870 USD. All right, so there goes that. Average. Out. Average. So he did the 30 days and he tried living on minimum wage. And yeah, he couldn't do it. It was like ridiculous. I think they should do that. Like, you know how they have undercover boss? I think they should do that with, you know, heads of corporations and management and CEOs and whatnot, make them live on their lowest paid employees wages for a month. I, I agree with that. Like, you know, a lot of people talk about Bezos and well, you know, he's paying those workers, you know, what their wage is, it's their choice or whatever. I get what they're saying. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's what they're doing. But when you're Amazon, man, and you're working those people like that. It's fucked up. There's, it's, there, it's just being a human being. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. I couldn't run a company like that. And I don't care how greedy I am and whatever. It gets to a point where I'm just a human being, man. I, I just couldn't, you know. But I worked shitty jobs growing up. So yeah. I know. You know what I mean? Like Bezos, oh he never had a shitty job. He went to good schools. He never worked. You know, he went from school to a straight up to a hedge fund. Mm -hmm. He never, I mean, I'm not saying it was an easy job. You know, it was a very demanding job, right. but he never worked manual labor in his life. He never did anything like that. He never worked at a so, restaurant or retail or any of that shit. And I think a lot of, I mean, that experience shapes how you see things in life. You know, if I had never worked retail or never worked, you know, in the food industry, I would have been spared so many life lessons that I would, wouldn't have learned otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. But. There's a, I think it should be required that people work uh, at a restaurant or retail for at least like three months of their life just yes. to learn. You know, like I, like um, Israel makes people go to the military for two <laughs> years mandatory. They should make you, you should. go like work at a restaurant or retail like mandatory for like six months. Exactly. Like six months eat, six months in the food industry, six months in retail. Yeah, and then absolutely. maybe six months as a receptionist. Yeah, that too. I don't know about that <laughs> one, but you know, just retail and restaurants, it will teach you. I can tell you right now, if you ever work retail or a restaurant, you will learn mm -hmm. what the fuck teamwork is because you have yeah. no choice, especially at a restaurant. Like, dude, people from all the walks of life, you have felons behind the line, you know, cooking, and these motherfuckers are hilarious, you know. They make the best of it. Everybody works yeah, like 16 are. hour shifts. You know, some people smoke weed behind the lines, some people drink or whatever, but everybody gets shit done, man. And at the yeah. end of the night, a good restaurant. There's pride at the end of the night that everybody like pulled through that shift. And I mean, I, I still have, um, which, you know, someone who grew up working in a restaurant, like I still have, uh, I'm looking at my bookcase, uh, Kitchen Confidential. I haven't read it. <laughs> like I bought it and I haven't read it yet. And that's so, supposed to be the Bible for like restaurants. My uh, first job was at Sonic and that still remains like the, I, it was in Little Elm, Texas. We didn't yeah. even have a stoplight, so, but we had a Sonic and like right. it was one of the first restaurants that started popping up. So our OG Sonic crew, uh, shout out. <laughs> With, that was the best job that I've ever had. Like my favorite job, great morale, like super great teamwork. I just loved the people that I worked with. It was a fun atmosphere. It was like family. And I if mean, they paid adult wages, I probably would work there again. Dude, once you work those many hours with those people, those type of jobs, when you're together under the same roof, 16 hour days, like six and a half days a week or seven days a week, because sometimes you just work back to back to back to back every holiday, yeah. every, you know, 
being in stressful yeah. situations together. Oh yeah, it totally, totally like you become like a family. Like you're yeah. friends for life after that. There's no doubt. So if you have kids, I will make them do that for a few months. I'll oh just hell yeah, that. yeah. So they learn That's how mandatory. to. mandatory. Uh, yeah. Anyway, talking about family, I got beef with you. By the way. Uh oh. So what is this shit you're posting around your? Um, your update the other day, which I, in very petty manner, I saw and I didn't like it uh, because it said, oh, thank you for everybody, my really close friends who listen to me, to my issues or whatever. Those are you. Thank you for listening. You're my best friends. Oh, gross. I didn't, I didn't Don't, reach out to me. That's not what I said at up. all. That's that is the opposite. Up. Okay. You are so delusional. I would have directed that hurt. towards you. I don't my heart you. is broken right now. You made me sound so basic. My status said something like I shared something with some close people in my lives and I didn't even say friends. Some of those people are family, but uh, I didn't What say, am I? I'm like you better than listening. family. Exactly, you are, trust me. Like I talk to you <laughs> and like would care to associate you. No, but um, I throw shade at you. Like we throw shade at each other pretty obviously. If we're gonna do it, we do it on each other's walls. Yeah. Or to each other's face. Sure. No, that was in reference to, um, I told some people some things and they were like super bitchy about it or just like, I mean, I don't need petty is not the word, but yeah, it wasn't about you. No, I know it wasn't, oh, about, it me. wasn't about you. I know it wasn't about me, <laughs> but I was like, Oh, that bitch. She didn't tell me. I need to know, you know, everything. It was probably something that's been like boiling in me. We've talked about stuff like that before. Yeah, I'm sure you did. And it was just like, Something just annoyed me that I saw or read, and I'm like, you know what? Oh, huh. it could be this. worse. It could be worse. It could be my feed for the past like two weeks. Like it started with everybody sharing Oprah and Oprah. Uh, The Rock. Uh, oh they're giving God. away money. They're giving away money. Make sure oh you like goodness. and share this yes. post. Man, that's when you, you never really, know. You never know. That's when you really, really find out who the stupid people on your feet are. Like when you start seeing the people who are sharing. Because if you, okay, if you're old, you're allowed to do that because old people just don't know better. So if you're over 16, you're sharing that, that's okay. But if you're my age and you're sharing that, you're a fucking idiot. Like, like I understand the need for hope. That's why people play the lottery. But people our age are like, you know, they literally, you never know. And, Chrissy, uh, you will I just always saw be that. My... Oh, we're missing all the comments that weren't live. They just came up. So something was going on. There's that. something going on with me live today. We got three in a row. Chrissy, you will always be my nugget and my tater tot. Don't worry. That's Wait, okay. does she want to be a nugget or a tater tot? Make yeah. her choose. Oh yeah, choose your destiny. So, <laughs> I don't. That, that's from like man. I don't know if she was. Oh man, our that's very so beginning. Just, yeah, that's from the very beginning. Yeah. So who's still here? We've no one. So people. see, no. I see viewers. That. I see so, live viewers. I do too. But now I, they're going to think that we ignored them on ignored purpose. Them. Damn yeah. it. We didn't ignore you. So if you're listening on the cast, we didn't ignore you later, which a lot of people do. They listen later. They're going to write vague status updates about us now. I know they're going to hate on us. It's like, they're too good for us now. They're ignore us. Mute but, all comments. Mute all comments. But anyway, oh, but yeah, people sharing. Okay. Like I get it. You want to have hope, but you go to these pages, Oprah's this page, is what you're Rob's broke. page, they are not, they're not even real profiles. They're not verified. And literally it's the same thing every day. Sharing 300 K like share and comment 17 times or comment like blessed. <laughs> blessed. Oh man. Now I'm seeing all the comments come in. This sucks. I wish it was live. Something yeah. Sabrina on. says uh, okay. custody agreements prevent you from moving cost thousands to change which is true that's what jameson was talking about yeah, i mean think about that if i would have seen that live because the name of this app is be live if it was working like it was supposed to be working you know the, it should be called be later be later yeah we can never get it to work on the first try like anyway all right so that was that and then of course uh, nike so that was the most genius marketing campaign ever I agree. because even if you hated them, everybody was talking about that. My favorite part, cause I'm totally over the political part of it. We've mm -hmm. said it a billion times back and forth on both sides, mm -hmm. but this was just absolutely genius. Yeah. Because 
okay, now I'm going to give my opinion and my two cents, you know, because <laughs> I do have here. I'm not doing it on my feed, but <laughs> I am in marketing. So, yeah, my opinion, yeah, I do have an opinion that has to do with it. It has a little bit of knowledge that goes along with it. So I am going to give my opinion, but all the other people who won't shut the fuck up about it, if you're not in marketing, shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. First of all, Nike has so much data on its exactly. users. They have everything, just like Facebook. What age, where you live, what color, what how race, how many you, you buy, how much money you spend, who's your demographic, who's following you on Instagram, who's following you on Facebook, who's going through that website every single day. Do you think Nike didn't fucking know that all these rednecks were going to go and throw their shit in their fire, they're cutting grass shoes on, on a fire pit and burning. And guess what? That's like five people out of everybody. And yes, the fucking stock dropped and they do, did lose $3 billion, but the stock's still 23% positive from last and also, year. And also Puma's stock dropped. Uh, Reebok stock dropped. Uh, Adidas stock dropped. It's like it happens the, all yeah, the time. This is what happens when a stock like that drops. Guess what? everyone's buying, including me. I bought Nike stuff because you know what? Like everything else on the fucking internet, the shiny object syndrome is going to wear off and that stock is going to go right back up. Mm -hmm. So, And then, you know, Americans, all they care about is a good sale. All those rednecks when Nike goes on sale for Black Friday or right before Christmas, nobody's even going to care about this. And two, uh, Nike sells all over the world, not yeah. just the US. So I know in America, we like to think we're the only center of the <laughs> fucking universe, but no, you have the rest of the world. You think the rest of the world gives a fuck about, first of all, they don't even give a fuck about football, about American football. American football doesn't exist outside the United States. Soccer is what runs the fucking world. So when you talk about American football, no one gives a fuck. People can name one team, just like you guys here can name you know, you, you guys can probably name more soccer teams so that anybody in the world can name fucking American football teams. No one cares. I bet you half of them don't even know about the kneeling issue. They don't give a shit. So trust me when I tell you Nike is going to go back up, especially with all this buzz that no one will shut the fuck up about it. And the more you bitch about it, the more you get the name out there and the more you get it out there and people, it's in the people's heads. And I'm sorry, if you're going to go around and you're going to like a fucking shoe and the new Jordans are going to drop next week, guess what? There's going to be a line fucking wrapped around that building. And they don't exactly. give a fuck if you're not spending your $59 on your fucking grass cutting shoes. All they give a fuck is about, you know, when you drop the $300 pair of Jordans that everybody's going to line up to buy. And that's it. That's my opinion. I shut the fuck up about it. I don't want to hear about it anymore for anybody except for you. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, I completely agree. That's been my argument pretty much. People are like, oh, Nike really fucked up this time. I'm like, you really think that this was a half-assed decision? They've been, I mean, this has been in the works for a while now. They know all of their demographics front to back. Like, and, <laughs> you know, making, making it about a flag or about disrespecting the police, that's not what this is about. So they're trying to twist and manipulate and pervert the entire thing, first of all. And then I saw people using um, Pat Tillman. He was in the military. And, or he served in the, or, sorry, he was in the NFL, quit to go serve in the military. And they're using his photo, like superimposed in the ad instead of Kaepernick's. And they're like, this is who you should use. He made a real sacrifice. And one, he was killed by friendly fire. Two, the military tried to cover it up. It was the soldiers who came out and told the truth. So, so much for respecting your military. If, the right. mil you know, the military doesn't respect its own soldiers. But um, his wife said, stop using his photo. He totally would have been there kneeling with Cap. Oh, like, really? I didn't yeah. I don't know. I see, I see the picture that's been going around. And then I saw... People just I get saw, triggered. Nicole's like, whoa, what the fuck's going on in there? Is Shannon even getting to talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, what do you call it? Um, did that kill me? Oh, I did see. Okay, so I saw that one going around, but I didn't know who it was. I didn't bother to read on it because I just I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing it on my feet, like literally. Um, so I did see that at one point, the wife of, of the guy who was a sniper who they did the movie about. Oh yeah, he's Kyle. annoying. Kyle, what's his name? I forgot. Uh, I I think Kyle something something Which, Kyle. Chris I read Kyle? his book, and then when I was halfway through, I I found out like. Like three quarters of it was completely fake. He's a liar. Made yeah. up, and it was all lies. 
So I was like, oh man, that's really shitty. Cause I was a really good story, but Chris Kyle, that was it. That's his name. Yeah. Uh, even his but, wife is like jumping in. It's like, oh, what my husband did and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bitch, you're 15 minutes. Of it's done. All right. Yeah. It's and that's over. where, like, you know, I totally respect what they do. Yeah. But all the back padding of the military and the police officers is really, it's just propaganda. It's people trying to force a rhetoric because honestly, they have, it's great that they do what they do. I totally respect what they do. I and do I too. appreciate their service. Yeah, but same. you're no better than, you know, like we were talking about before, somebody working in retail or, you know, if everybody that worked in restaurants and retail quit tomorrow, yeah. people would be like fucked up. Right. You know, the world would stop turning. I mean, the, the whole military thing. You're not the thing. most important because you're, because you're in a uniform. Listen, I respect the military. I respect anybody that goes in the military. But when they start like walking that fine wire, it's like, I fight for your freedom. Uh, no, you, you go over there. You it's volunteer. One. volunteer work. It's not a draft, too. You're volunteering for whatever reason it is. If you want to do it for your quote unquote country, good for you. I admire you. But in my eyes, you're fighting a politician's war yeah. that only cares about their own economic gains, they don't give a fuck about you. Exactly. I don't care and what they do and what they say and how they act. It's all about economic gain and power and control. You're base. I hate to say it like this, but you're basically being a puppet for someone to do whatever they want to run the world. You know, just you're like exactly any right. other country. And I'm not saying just. I'm. Just, I'm talking about every any country whatsoever. So, I mean, I'm sure if we get an invasion here, listen, I'll grab a fucking gun and start shooting back. You know, yeah. it's like. But am I going to go over there and fight a war just because a politician doesn't get along with another country and, you know, they decided that they're going to fuck each other up like North Korea and the U.S.? Like, uh, I'm sorry, what did I do to get in the middle of this shit? I was just born here or I live here. You know, yeah. it's like that that makes no sense to me whatsoever. So. so we don't have, you know, and I mean, it's just it's I know people are going to take their disrespectfully, but it's just facts. It's not disrespect. Um, no. we, nobody's fighting for our freedoms. The military is not these days. When have, has our country been in such, received such threats? I mean, since we've been alive, even where we needed our military to protect us, it's been wars about oil or territory or, I mean, so it's true. They are being used as pawns in a political game. That's all it is. And, yeah. you know, more power to you if you're doing it for school, if you're doing it because, you know, it's just a tradition in your family or, you know, for valor or whatever you do it for more power to you. But no, I definitely res re respect it. But I also know a few people who take it just on a power trip, just because exactly. they, they went to the military. And you they're, know, they're yeah. regular people. They're no different than, you know, an asshole cashing you out or checking you out at the grocery store, anybody. Yeah. And, you know, I do feel, I do feel for them like PTSD and shit like that, because some of them do get, I mean, obviously again, like real combat and stuff like that, but. Yeah. And then to come back and not have the same country that you served for take care of you. That's the other thing. Yeah. They don't take care of you. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, that's a whole different story that we can get into, but. Yeah. I know many, many people in the military that bitch about not getting taken care of when they come back and it's just like, okay. You know, they can't get a job. They can't do this. They can't do yeah. that. Like They can't why? even get a doctor's appointment. They can't? I don't know that I mean, part. it's so difficult. I've had friends post, you know, waiting hours for doctor's appointments only to be told to come back in three months or, you know. Oh, it's really? It's a pain in the ass. They are not treated well. I know. It's a touchy subject, but it's like, you know, that's just the way I think. I don't think like... You know, the U.S. is just the most powerful country in the world, and we're used as the, the go-to to take care of other people's trauma. You know, if we really cared about everyone, why haven't we intervened in Venezuela? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, because there's no, which I'm amazed because there's tons of oil. So, you know, it's like. I just think patriotism gets confused with nationalism. You are allowed to be proud of your country mm. and patriotic without agreeing with everything that it does. It doesn't make you less American. I think- That's a beauty of America that you can, you can disagree to, you can agree to disagree. You can say exactly. if you don't like something, right? I think we've turned patriotism, we've perverted it into a manufactured Walmart brand. You know, you have to wave the flag. You have to, you know, recite, you better recite that anthem, you know, and 
know every single word and i mean just... you know ever since i moved here even when i went to school i mean i you know i did the whole uh allegiance to the flag and the whole nine yards in school you know I didn't. even when i was young we observed we were allowed to observe a moment of silence and that's what i did i just did it out of respect because i live here you know what i mean like it doesn't bother we're me new and yeah, no, I, I still do I mean, it though. Like it doesn't bother me. Like I have no problem showing like just like I do it for my other countries. Like I have no problem doing that. You know, yeah. because it's a sign of respect and culture and the whole nine yards, right? But mm -hmm. to tell me that I'm disrespecting something because I don't know, I I didn't kneel properly or whatever. That come on, get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. you know, like then that's the other thing. Then after with this whole Nike thing, I come to find out the whole kneeling thing started because a veteran told him yeah. not to sit down because that's a sign of disrespect. And the guy to called kneel. him up, met with him, had a meeting with him. He's like, do this. He's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to start doing that. And people, listen, people just bitch, just bitch, man. And it's like, they I'm, do sick, do of it. I'm because sick of Because I've had people say, well, what about black on black crime? Well, what does that have anything to do with? officers who have taken a sworn oath with mm -hmm. you can't compare like an officer to a civilian and without knowing i mean then again you're going back into demographics how was this person raised were they raised with or without you know a father or a mother listen i'm not saying you know? that that people are saints because i've seen plenty of videos with people who serve to get the shit beat out of any yeah. color i don't care what color you are but i also seen a bunch of videos Oh shit, that should not go down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I can't, there's so many, I can't even, I mean, I, I can go through a list right now of some that I've seen, but I also seen videos where people deserve to get the shit beat out of them. And I'm like, you know what? You deserved it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I've seen videos where people look for shit. You know, yeah. if the cop, you're sitting there, okay, let's say you're sitting there and you shouldn't get asked for your ID, but if the cop oh, yeah. asks you, you know, I love like, those videos. Yeah, it's just, just fucking tell them your name and show them your ID, and that's it. Go on with your fucking day. Like, or they're like, "I'm not driving, I'm traveling." Yeah, it's. I'm a like, free citizen. Yeah, I love a, those videos, funny. and then they get their windows broken and yanked out of the car. Yeah, it's it's like they'll think they're lawyers, but none of them are lawyers. That's what <laughs> cracks me up. And then my favorite, it's like, I saw one. I saw a few that it was. Uh, I do not. That will go to Walmart. And we'll buy things. So when they walk out and ask him for the receipt, they just kept walking. And they're like, I don't have to show you my receipt. What is this? Citizen's arrest? And oh it will turn into a deal. Next thing you know, they're brawling in the middle of Walmart and getting arrested. I just wanted to prove a point. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> good, like good really? luck. Going to jail for like at least a day, a day of your life is worth it and locked up in a cell just because you didn't want to show your receipt on your way out from Walmart. Like, it's just dumb. You know what I mean? I mean, I've had that same thought. It's so annoying. Like why, you know, but it takes two seconds. You've got your, you just checked out, you've got your receipt in your hand and I don't go to Walmart, but at the rare occasion that I go to Sam's club, they do mm -hmm. that there. Right. It's like, God, one of these days I just want to like sneak off. I'll pretend to be well, on my phone. And you just know why? You know why? Because you're being a dick to the person who's working. The person who's exactly. working there is doing their job because they told them that's what they got to do and they got to do their job. Trust and me. And generally they they're take... old people. Yeah. It's you like, know, really let them gonna... do it. Yeah, exactly. So that reminds me of, okay, so there's this actor. Oh, what is his name? What is his name? Jeffrey Owens. He was on the Cosby show. Have you heard about that? Yes, I did see something about it. I don't remember his name, but I did see working. that he, he people were giving crap about He's working, working at Trader Joe's. Oh yeah, they're giving him crap about working. Uh there's yeah. nothing Not wrong. Not everybody with that. who's an actor makes millions of dollars, you know, and I'm sure he burned through his money or his parents did back in the day. Yeah, and you it's know, better I, than, you know, he he's not being a desperate actor, you know, uh trying to collect his last 15 minutes of fame. He's not doing anything wrong or illegal or immoral or anything. He is working. He has to eat. He has to feed his family. He's not out asking for handouts. You know, his ego's not so big that he's not going to take a job that feeds his family. No, man, I admire that. He's doing what he's got to do. You know, it's better than doing nothing. And, and by, by the way, we have, by the way, we have a lot of people on and I can see there's a bunch of people on and I can't see the comments. So I can't either. <laughs> if you try to comment there, there's something going on. There's a glitch. So I can't see your comments live. Maybe they'll pop out later. So you're going to have to listen for answers later. Anyway, what were you saying? So, uh, 
but this has gotten lots of attention from like Tyler Perry, Eddie Murphy, like people are wanting to give him jobs now. So that uh, silver lining. So there you go. Hopefully he'll get some new acting jobs and make some good money and, you know, take it from there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. So no, but he was, I felt bad for him because he was on a show and he's like, I was humiliated. Like you don't want to see your face in front of like every celebrity rag mag or website in your Trader Joe's outfit mm -hmm. made to feel bad because you're, you have a job. It's that's terrible. Yeah. And somebody I mean, said people today are just internet sick. And that is such a great phrase that I'm going to start using. Then that's basically all internet trolls are just internet sick. It's people think because there's a screen in front of them that they're anonymous or that they can say whatever they want. And yeah, that's what it is. People maybe like the worst thing that we've done, and this is hypocritical because we're doing this right now, but maybe the worst thing we've done as a society is give everybody a voice, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, even, you know, dumb people have a voice and idiots have a voice and, you know, you <laughs> look dude, at the breaks... e channel. Yeah. Don't even get me started on that. I mean, everybody there, every, every, nobody there deserves a voice. Yeah. But then to top it all off, it's the idiocracy, man. Like everybody's turning into idiots and it's like, people say, well, that's what you see on your feet. I'm like, well, the people that I see on my feet are my quote unquote fucking friends and acquaintances. So if they're stupid, and I thought they were like mentally normal. <laughs> like, what's the rest of the world like? You know, exactly. like <laughs> that and don't have an education or whatever. I feel like more and more rapidly. It's like more. We're seeing more of it, but also very quickly. I, I don't remember people being this stupid not too long ago. And it's funny because we have more technology and more information available now than ever. But I think a lot of it has to do with confirmation bias people don't want to know the truth they want to see things that confirm what they already believe and listen i'm not going to be a hypocrite here because uh anybody who's close to me knows that i've been on a real housewives from new york rampage from season one <laughs> so i got hooked on it so i've been watching that and it's stupid and it's dumb and it's ridiculous it's just mindless entertainment because that's exactly what it is mindless entertainment but I know that, you know what I mean? Like I know that, but I also read books in the morning that are, you know, related to the stuff that I do. And I work my ass up all day and I'm learning constantly learning on what I do. What's scary to me, the people who spend 12 hours a day watching Real Housewives and then that's who all they the do. the products, who yeah. you know, support Kylie Jenner, you know, they called her a self-made billionaire, which or millionaire or something. She billionaire. wasn't. Uh, no, she's so far from self-made, but they somebody started a GoFundMe for her to make her a billionaire. A billionaire. And people were donating. That's what I don't understand. Like, seriously, this is why you're broke. So next time you're you're broke after paying and then you're bitching about being broke, and then you go out and buy a seven dollar cappuccino at Starbucks. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't feel bad. Like, I really yeah. don't. That I, I don't to... feel bad for. Like, if you're actually trying and whatnot, but if you're, you know, going out to bars, spending your money, going shopping, the mm -hmm. whole poor me aspect when it's really just all your fault for every single one of your issues. Talk about, oh, did you see the story about the homeless guy who suing the couple? Okay, let me see if I remember this correctly. So there was this homeless guy. There was this girl that ran out of gas in New Jersey and the homeless guy gave her his last 20 bucks to fill up her tank with gas. It wasn't this fake. True it was story. Okay. Yes. So she goes and to pay it back, starts a GoFundMe. The GoFundMe hits 400 grand. Jesus. Yes. I and think I heard this was a couple weeks ago, right? Yes. And it's yes. supposed to go to the guy, right? The homeless guy. Mm -hmm. So what, what do they do? They give the homeless guy like, I don't know the exact number. I think it was like 20 grand or something like that. Oh my God. And then they go out and spend the rest of the money. So now they're in court battles. The homeless Good. guy is suing them. Good. They just went to their house. They they repoed their BMW and seized like a bunch of shit out of their house. Like, like That's I don't, one, I don't do GoFundMe. Two, I don't no. follow like those viral stories because no. I mean, YouTubers, whatever, especially recently there have been so many that are 
you know, fraudulent and people bust them. And, but don't, don't donate to things. I mean, like, I hope he gets all of his money and more. Well, yeah. Because she didn't deserve that $20 in the first place. She's well, been- this was her excuse. Well, we started giving him money and then he started smoking crack with it and he was burning all through drugs. So we stopped giving him all the money because he was just burning through it. Well, so set up a, a fund of some, or yeah. not a fund, like an Send account. Send it to rehab. Send exactly. it to rehab. Do an intervention. Like if you were a nice human being, you would be like, I mean, that's a lot of money, so it's tempting. But yeah, set up a bank account. Right thing you're only allowed. Like, yeah. Well, no, you can't. You can't do that unless you get power of attorney because he's an adult. So it's his money. Well, technically, I mean, I guess with GoFundMe, if they started the charity and said it was for him. Mm-hmm. I yeah, but if it, legally they're bound to give it to him. I mean, either way, it's totally unethical if they didn't give it to him. Yeah. But I so, wonder legally how that would work. No, they. you need power of attorney because I've seen – uh, stuff like that. I uh, works with money they, and you need uh, power of attorney to be able to handle somebody else's money. If not, it belongs to him. It doesn't matter if they're burning them on, on crack or whatever, you know? Right. Well, if it's, if it's, cause I don't know how the legalities of GoFundMe work, but if it was their money because they started it, they could have started an account and then made him, gave him, given him access to that account. Okay. I can see comments again. Woohoo. They bought him a trailer. Okay, Chrissy's Chrissy's saying they bought him a trailer, put it on their property, and then kicked him out. Oh my god, (laughs) that's so fucked up. That's terrible. (laughs) Oh, okay. Trigger me. I'm triggering people. Apparently, Ross. I triggered Ross. The fact that people are talking about it shows they know they're doing. Nike's not IHOP. 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 Yes, Chrissy's awesome. That's why I love her. IHOP. Yes. I wish you could see it, but you can't see him. Oh, okay. there they all just came in again. Did they? Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Trigger me timbers. I don't know. Who knows what was like going off? I was triggered at one point, so that's something to do with it. I love you, Ross. My favorite Canadian. It's my favorite Canadian in the whole world. Uh, so. I think anyway, so yeah. So they bought him a, they bought him a trailer. <laughs> I don't know what that makes me laugh. <laughs> That's terrible. That's it's why terrible. Like, I am just, I just am very hesitant when people post GoFundMe's because I have a friend who's always doing it and it's always for, I'm doing this for an anonymous friend. Yeah. No. When I, in reality, I really am almost 100% sure it's for them. Yeah, I don't trust a GoFundMe. I mean, I don't care what it is. I just don't trust it. I like. I rather donate to a GoFundMe where like it's a teenager. Like I've seen the ones like, but help me get a boob job. At least you're being truthful oh about the shit you want. Uh, but uh, Facebook started doing that now. That's other thing. It's like, oh, it's my birthday. Donate to this. Listen, I donate, dude. If I donated to everything that asks for money on a daily basis, Publix does that. That's the other thing. You go to Publix and you go buy something. It's like, we'd like to donate a dollar to the fucking kids, blah, 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 or I don't know, it changes daily. And then I'm you're the like, piece of shit who's standing in line with everybody looking at you. You're like, no, not today. Oh, I don't even care anymore. I'm just like, no. I'm just I like, still- dude, I'm sorry. Like, if I donated money every time I went to Publix, I'd be broke. Like, you go to Publix, like, fucking at least once a day, you know? Yeah, and I donate what I can when I can, but I, I still sometimes I feel like shit when I'm like, would you like to donate to homeless children with cancer and, you know, no parents, they're orphans. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, no, no, thank you. Like I literally just donated yesterday and they're like, Oh, wow. Screw you. Have a nice day. And, and then, then my like fa- boy scouts right now they're doing their, I'm all about girl scout cookies. I hate the harassment, but I will almost every time buy girl scout cookies, boy scouts. On the other hand, they sell popcorn. It's gross. And it's way more expensive than Girl Scout cookies. Like a little tin was like thirty bucks. I'm like, sorry, but no. Are you serious? I didn't yeah. know this. I didn't even know the guy at the Boy Scouts sold anything. Yes, it's kind of sad because no one knows they sell anything. And of all things, they sell popcorn, which you know it's stale. Like, yeah, they, they need to step up their game. They need to yeah. like sell burgers and hot dogs or something. Something to rival cookies. Something that stoned people like to eat. Ice cream. That's great. That's a great idea. Yeah, but the problem is how they're going to sit out. Well, they need coolers and all that crap if they're yeah. going to set shop outside. Like, 
you know, Something pot cool stores. Though. What can they do? Brownies. Yeah. Brownies. There you go. But how many different flavors of brownies can you have, though? Um, it, same as Girl Scout cookies, I guess. I guess you could get um, you could get uh, what do you call it? Uh, creative with it, but I don't know, man. Yeah. Everybody just asks for money. No, oh, that's uh, you know, when I was growing up and I used to donate, like in college, I used to go to the Salvation Army and donate clothes or whatever. And I still do it just because I'm lazy, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like the biggest scam. It's the biggest scam ever. You're donating yeah. clothes to a store who's going to clean it or just pick it out or wash it and then resell it. Exactly. <laughs> what do they do with the money? Oh, we're a nonprofit organization. So, like, I bet you 90% of the operating costs go out of their pocket. And then they donate 10% to who knows what. So Red Cross is terrible. Goodwill, I have not read good things. I donate to, here in our area, it's Friends of the Family. And there's a place in Denton, or in Dallas called Genesis Women's Shelter. Mm -hmm. I would donate to them. You can take it into their home base location. And there are mm -hmm. literally people there. It's a shelter for battered women or men or children. And there are people in the lobby who look through the things for free. Or you can take it to their distribution center where they do sell the things, but everyone who is, I guess, a client of friends of the family who needs assistance gets like a voucher for 30% off everything they buy. It's just annoying. Everybody's just always asking you for something. So, okay. So for example, the other day, a new pizza uh, shop opened up uh, here locally and it's supposed to be New York pizza. And I actually drove over there because it looked really good in picture and it looks like legit. Yeah. And it was really, it was good actually. It was legit New York pizza. And I, I go up to the counter, I met the owner, and we're talking, and, you know, he's asking me questions, what do I do? I tell him, oh, marketing, you know, Facebook, blah, blah, And then, okay, well, pizza's ready, so I go, you know, okay, all I did was order myself. I walked to the counter, ordered a pizza, and they brought it out to me. And then it was like a Larry David moment. Like So I get the receipt, right, for the pizza, and then like the guy's watching me and I just, you know, I just grab the tip part and I just go straight line through it and I just sign it. Yeah. I could tell he was like annoyed by that. Like that look, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh my God. Like, like oh, you did no, it. I'm not, total Larry David dude, moment. I'm not fucking tipping you for handing me the product that I just paid for. If I go to a bar and you're serving me drinks, yes, I will tip you. If I'm sitting at a restaurant and you're bringing me my food, yes, I will tip you. If you're in LA and you bring me my card, yes, I will tip you. But this shit about tipping for everything is getting annoying too. Like, it is. Thank like, you. Because everyone I wanted wants to a talk fucking about tip that. now for doing their job. I, I wanted I, to talk about the, what is it, double your tip challenge or whatever. I don't want to tip anybody, first of all. I think they should raise <laughs> the prices. Pay your pay your employees accordingly so I right. don't have to pay them. So your customer is not responsible for your employee having a livable wage. But like Dude, at that was, the sandwich places around here, that they was a ask scam. you for tips. That was a scam from back in the day because the business owners didn't want to pay or they could I don't remember if they didn't want to, they didn't want to pay their employees. So that's how they developed the whole tipping scam. We're the only fucking country in the world that does this. You go to Europe, you don't have to tip. You yeah, know? it's actually like frowned upon and kind of offensive yeah. if you tip in some places. And you know what? I don't mind. I don't mind tipping. I really don't. I don't mind tipping if it's a service, but I'm yeah. not fucking tipping you for handing me my cup of coffee that I order at the counter. No, because you don't go to, I mean, what's a fast food rush? Like Domino's or you don't tip at McDonald's or Domino's when you go to pick up your food. Oh, no, they're starting to do the same thing. They're putting tipping shit on their receipts. That's and it's ridiculous. like. No, man, I'm no, you know, I don't care. I just don't care. Larry David moment. Like, I don't care. I don't care how much money I have. It's just the principle behind it. It is the principle. And, you know, again, I will tip you. I've worked in the service industry. Yes. I will never not tip somebody. But I wish they would just abolish that stupid, archaic thing completely. Like, charge me more. I would rather pay more for my food yeah. or whatever it is than tip. Oh I'm no, so and that's that's the other one here in Lauderdale because you know there's so much money here or whatever. It's like you go out to a restaurant and there's like a group of like, you know, fifteen of you or whatever, mm -hmm. and then servers always get pissed off when you ask for split checks. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not balling enough tonight where I want to take everybody's like you know hundred and fifty dollar dinner and yeah. you know it's like paid the top for everybody. And it's not hard. <laughs> like when they no. give me attitude, I mean, because I know I've worked in it. 
don't give me an attitude. I oh, I never took it out on you know my customers, even though some of them are super shitty. Yeah, your job is customer service. If you no. cannot do customer service, get a different job. My favorite is when we do that, like we go with a huge group like that, and then we ask them to split the the check, and they give us some bullshit excuse because the server doesn't want to do it. They just want to be lazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like. It's like, well, if you guys want, just you know, write the amounts on the back of the check with, and just tell me which credit card is which, and I'll do it or whatever. I'll be like, I don't fucking math. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't that's math. not I'm my not job. Like, I, no, sorry. You're I know for a service. If yeah. you're gonna tip, you know, I mean, like, no, that's part of their job. You I can did split it. it. Didn't on have the a computer. You just it. don't want to do it. And I'm sorry. I'm not gonna fucking sit here and start calculating tabs for everybody. I never do it. I was like, I'm not doing it. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like. That's the other thing. It's so what I started luxury. doing, you know what I started doing to avoid the whole thing completely? Like if we go out with a huge group of people like that, I just, as soon as the server gets my drink, I was like, hey, can you please just like put me in a separate tab for everyone or just put me, you know, uh, you know, if I'm with my wife or whatever, us two together or whatever. We say that too. Sometimes it makes me feel cheap, but it's like, well, I don't no. want to have to deal with it later. No, no. It's like, you know, you pay for your shit. If I, if I feel like paying for other people, then I'll take up the whole tab. But you know, it doesn't mean that because I, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. No, whatever. You know what Generally, I'm saying? Generally we do tell them at the beginning, but. I'm oh no. My favorite is the people who are lazy and on top of it, they don't want there be one of they, they're willing to do the math, but they're lazy with the math. So what they do is, so let's say we go out, right? And I just order, I don't know, a burger. And I'm not, you know, I don't feel like drinking today. I know, super weird. Like that barely yeah. happens to people if I go out. But let's say I don't drink. So I just have a burger and a soda or whatever. So my tab should be 20 bucks, right? Well, so and so decided to order three thousand appetizers and two mm -hmm. courses and three entries, and then when the tap goes, oh guys, let's just make it easy. Let's just split it evenly. Split it, yeah. It's like uh, no, I didn't have all the shit you guys had. Why should I fucking pay more for what I? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm always the. Cheapest I'm not the only one person. who does that, right? I'm not the only no, one who does I, that. No, I am the same way. Like, I my food's always cheapest because. One, I don't get meat. And usually it's just like a vegetable assortment of some sort. And I drink water or, you know, on the rare occasion, I'll drink like a glass of wine or a mixed drink. And when yeah. people want to split it, I'm like, I didn't eat your greasy appetizers. I mean, if I'll, if, if we're going to share appetizers, I have no Then yes, you that. pay for it. Yeah, Absolutely. Of you know, yes, like absolutely. I get one, you get one. We'll try. We'll do a little sampler platter. That's fine. Yeah. But they're just doing that because they're cheap. But if you order appetizers, you ask me if I want any, and I say no, and I don't touch it, I'm not paying for that shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, like no, it's not happening. I don't care. It's my money. Yeah, exactly. But that was that was more in my 20s. Now that I'm in my late 30s, like I only have a few friends that I actually go out with anymore. <laughs> so it's like we're on the same we're on the same level of, of of going out and paying for shit. So it's like yeah, like everybody's similar. done with the crap. Yeah, yeah just we like, just I'll know. get mine, you get yours. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny because we were talking the other day about. Oh, I do have a friend. Like, if I go out with them, I'll pick up the whole check one time, and then next time we go, you know, he'll pick up the whole check the next time. But it, you know, it evens out at the end. So that's yeah, that's what we do. So. But just the group of friends gets smaller and smaller as you get older. And I was <laughs> I talking to somebody. How do you break up with a friend? I think it's harder to break up with a friend than it is to break up with a significant other. It is. It really is. I think like my friend, actually my, with me, it's been different. Okay. So some of my friends that I don't talk to anymore is because I moved, but I still talk to them on like Facebook and stuff like that. Like we don't yeah. talk on the phone. Like guys just don't do that. Like for example, Scott's one of my best friends. He was like the best man at my wedding. Right. Like the whole time I was in Texas, I probably spoke to him on the phone like five times, you know, <laughs> like, well, with hey, social buddy. media and everything, like, you know, we're still like best friends. Just like, you know, you're over there. Josh is over there. Jeremy's over there. So the friendship is, it's always the same, no matter how much time goes by. Exactly. We, it's yeah, not so. weird and awkward and we have to get to know each other again. When it comes to local friends, I just, there's some of them that I just like, eh, it's just, we don't have that much in common anymore. Like some of them just still want to go out all the time and I, I don't want to go out all the time. You know, yeah. some of them want to, go to Miami or, you know, going like this whole thing. I'm like, I don't want to lift my fucking one mile ratio, you know, that requires me to drive somewhere. Like I just, yeah. I'm very, I'm very like in my own, I was the same in Texas. Like I used to go to fucks and hell all the time just because 
I didn't want to go anywhere else. I was. It was just comfort. It was comfort. You have everything you need in your little radius. And, and I still, I mean, I still go out other places, but for me to go somewhere else, it, it, it has to be something going on. Not just like right. today, I just feel like going to Miami to go to dinner. Like, yeah. you know, I don't feel it. Like, I didn't want to think about like me. The drive, my, being full, having to drive back. I can't drink if I drive all the way down exactly. there. So it's like, I can only have like, we went to that Barton G's restaurant, which they make this amazing, like nitrogen infused drinks and, you know, whatever, like each drink was like $30. And it's like, you know, if I'm going to pay this much for a drink, I want to enjoy it type of yeah. deal. And which I did, but it's like, you know, I wanted to have like, I know there are three, but I had to drive back and I'm like, you know, it's like, like what's the point of even having one at that point? Because just the taste, but you know, at that yeah. point I'm like, I want to get kind of a buzz going on if I'm exactly. going to, you know, and then, you know, you could, I guess I could get an Uber, but you know, get an Uber for 120 bucks to spend another $350 in dinner and pay another 150 on the way back. No, sorry. And then have to come get your car. Well, no, the car stays here if I take the Uber. Oh, or, yeah, Uber or, or let's back. say, if, yeah, it. let's say if I drive there. Which, by the way, anywhere in Miami, you're paying twenty five dollars to park minimum. Yeah. So you know, there goes that. And that annoys me too. That's another reason I don't like going anywhere. Because Dallas, there's nowhere to park. It's all you know, the parking lots where you have to pay. Or, I mean, I hate, there's you can't park anywhere, and then everywhere is like apartments and condos. Yeah. So you're forced to park like blocks away, pay for. a pay for the torture of walking wherever you need to be. I think we're becoming our own like Larry Davids. <laughs> like we just don't want to deal with shit anymore. We can have him on the show. He's so relatable. He totally is relatable. Talk about the show. Whatever happened with this church of Satan? I know we're trying really hard on that one. They are, let me double check. Cause I, I want to make this sound as official as I really want to talk to them. They don't, they don't think we're going to troll them, right? Because I'm, no, I'm I, totally not trolling trolling them. They can come yeah, after me by trolling. Plenty of time to look at our stuff. So I followed up and they said, hey, we're definitely interested. Uh, we've sent it up to the National Council. Oh, so we made it national. I mean, yeah. we, we're getting pretty high up in the ranks there. They said they're going to keep us posted. I'm so sorry. I'm tardy in responding. So, so polite. So polite. Very yeah. polite about church of Center. Yeah, it's amazing how people can think of associations that are completely different what they think they are. And then do the ones that are supposed to goody goody ones are the rudest of all times. I, think, you know, trust me. I mean the church of or the satanic temple, they do so many amazing things for children. Pass get laws passed, uh what? changing things in schools, abuse laws, yeah. Amazing. I mean, I cannot wait to talk to him and be enlightened. They uh, they made me want to convert. If I were to ever pick a religion, I don't know if they consider themselves a religion. We'll get into that when we have them on, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it would be them. See, I was so misinformed too. Like back in the day, I used to think like, you know, Church of Satan and then uh -huh. you know, 666. Six, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to learn, you know, from them and how that whole deal got started and how the two of them paired up and see how that went but oh real quick before we go because i see you looking yeah uh, Alex i'm trying to see the comments on this screen because i can't see them on real time so i'm making sure I i'm not missing either. anybody they come in like all at once and yeah then they something's stop. going on alex jones and marco rubio <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing i did so, see that <laughs> my marco favorite rubio. part <laughs> My favorite part of the whole thing, it's Alex, like, keeps yelling, Infowars.com, Infowars.com. <laughs> like, he just has that fucking burnout, raspy voice like, with smoking uh, so many cigarettes and yelling. And whiskey. And whiskey. Infowars.com. <laughs> and cocaine. Yes. So, Marco Rubio, if you guys haven't had a chance to watch it, is coming out of a meeting about social, hit, social media right. on Capitol Hill. With Sheryl uh, Sandberg and Jack, whatever his name is, from Twitter. Yeah, and so um, Alex Jones has been banned from lots of you know social media, Twitter. I'm pretty sure he was banned from Facebook. So he's there, and Marco Rubio's talking to this reporter, and you just hear this grumbling in the background, and then it's just like <laughs> over and over, like pecking, 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 and then Marco Rubio's like, "Who is this guy?" And he's like, "Don't act like you don't know who I am." Infowars.com, <laughs> <laughs> and then so. Marco Rubio, just he's trying to get this interview. Alex Jones will not leave him alone. And finally, Rubio says, no, no, we don't need the cops. 
I'll handle this. I can and, handle uh, you by myself. I can handle you by myself. <laughs> and Alex Jones is like, Rubio threatened me with physical violence. Did you guys get that? And it, it is just, what is happening in our society? Like, it's ridiculous, man. Like, what okay. Is going on? This like, is politics. Uh, again, Alex Jones is fucking hilarious. Like, he's the biggest troll. And it's, he knows it's a fucking act. Like, you know, some of the shit he's doing, he's taking it too far with like the crisis actors and shit like that. Yeah. Like, but he does live in some of that conspiracy shit, but he takes it too far. But he's trolling, man. The whole thing, he knows exactly what he's doing. And under the court of law, he was sworn under oath for his like divorce from his wife. He admitted he knows yeah. everything that he's saying bullshit. Yeah. It's, it's a character. Yeah, I mean, it's, but it's character. dangerous because people believe him. People That's are stupid. That's the fucking problem. The they stupid people believe track. it. Yeah. That brings us back bring us back to what we were talking about earlier. Yes. Like people are just dumb. Like you know, they don't think for themselves. So I don't get into the, you know, I like discussions mm -hmm. with people I think, you know, I can have even if they're I've got three far right-wing friends that I have great discussions with. You know, we can disagree and whatnot. But mm -hmm. Every time I see someone posting fake news now, it's really hard for me not to just, all I do is just post the link that totally debunks that fake thing or, you know, like, oh, don't leave your windows rolled up in your car. There's poisons in the seat. <laughs> like, that's why so many people have cancer these days. And yeah, I'm, I'm not down that. for, you know, poisonous have, chemicals that don't I have. Me. I have two of my friends that went past the, the conspiracy rabbit hole. Like they're deep. They're like super deep. And one day I was scrolling by and one posted something. I'm like, this is fake, bro. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then I just posted a bunch of facts, you know, like uh, the exactly. real shit. Oh, like, of course there was no comeback, but it's like, he just starts arguing. I'm like, what? I even said in the comments, like, why do I even bother? Exactly. And it's sick because, like, I, I love these guys. You know, I know since I was a kid, and it's just like, guys, like, you guys need to come out of your little bubble. Like, you guys are way too deep into the shit. Start looking at both sides. That's, you know, the Alex Jones thing. I think it's hilarious, but in his defense, there's a lot of shit you're not allowed to say on Facebook. And listen, I've had ad accounts banned on Facebook just because I used certain words that I wasn't allowed to. Now, in my defense. Their rules are really wishy-washy when it comes to like what you can do and cannot do when you're posting ads and when you're running campaigns. So I did it and they basically said, fuck you, you're off the account. Yeah. But I have, you know, I have an agency account, so I can have up to 800 accounts. So it's like, who cares? I just started so another one. But that's the other thing. They're working, they're trying to minimize fake news because yeah. freedom of speech is one thing, but sharing blatantly false information, whether you know it's whether it's true or not. We've got to hold people accountable, whether it's the the sources of this information or the people sharing it. You're an adult fact check. So you've got they're working on the algorithm. They're working on, you know, getting getting the fake news off Facebook. But there mm -hmm. are going to be kinks. So I've had people on both sides of the fence. They're, saying, they're being they're, hardcore. Yeah. So they're like they're a liberal cog and they won't let me share this. Or, you know, they're deleting everything I posted. No, all you have to do. And then I've had people on the left say the same thing. Like, oh, I shared this and Facebook, you know, is censoring me. No, they're not censoring you. Just dispute it. And more than likely, it will get brought back on. Yeah, but exactly. But they're they're being hardcore. Like, you know, in the marketing world, like what a lot of people were doing like I even did it myself for a while. Like I, I used my cover picture, like yeah. basically as an ad, as a billboard for my business. Oh yeah. And all of a sudden I wake up one day and every marketer is, you know, crying out loud because their account, personal accounts got banned because this is what people don't know. When you're running an agency or a business account, it's all tied to your personal. Mm -hmm. So if your personal gets banned, you lose your fucking business. So people lost their shit. Like yeah. I know people who would reopen Lots agency accounts. Yeah, I, I know people who had to reopen, literally go to the store, buy a laptop that they can only use, let's say, at Starbucks down the road because they track your, your IP Wi address IP. and open the business account under their mom's Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, and they'll catch up to you. It's it, the, you, And on top of that, I just got reading a book called The Facebook Effect, which is the story of Facebook from the beginning till now. And it was written by one of the people that were in, on the inside from the beginning 
And the vision that Suggs had from the beginning, it's what we're seeing now. Like yeah. this was planned out from the beginning and it's only going to get worse. Like he's always, he never cared about the money, which is obvious. Two, he always wanted to control over Facebook no matter what. Like he always wanted to be CEO and he, he played his cards and was advised very well to never lose his seat as a CEO. Like it's happened in other Silicon Valley businesses. And three, he wants it to be all transparent. He wants people to be the real people. That's why we went through the stage of people getting their ID, asking for IDs. Like mm -hmm. you couldn't have a fake name anymore. Like they're going, they want you to be the real you because in his head, he's like, people act differently when it's them, the real person comes out. So, that so I don't ever report on Facebook. I mean, cause I don't care, but I yeah. will report you if you have a stupid ass fake name, like Tammy, the queen Smith or like yeah. Michelle no. mom of three Jenkins. Like I report like fake <laughs> articles all the time. Oh like yeah. Click and bait and fake articles because I know they'll, they'll go, they'll, they'll nail them. You but can the other, report fake news people, by the way. Yeah. You can report the fake news and people blame sucks for everything, man. But the one who, who runs with an, with an iron fist is fucking Cheryl. Cheryl, the, the COO, uh, mm -hmm. what's it, Sandberg, Cheryl Sandberg. Like she's the one who's in, in charge of like making sure that every advertiser is verified that it's not from like now to advertise on Facebook, you can go to a page and you can see what ads they're running, how much money they're spending, where they're from, what's the company name, where they're located. So it's going to be hardcore, man. So they're, they're really fighting hard to get rid of all that shit. So yeah. there's big changes coming. So and it's a free platform. You don't have to use it. They're not. If yeah. even if they were censoring you, leave. Yeah. Start your own. They you can know? literally. They can do whatever they want. I if you're watching this and you're listening to this and your podcast, I you can go to your settings. You can go to security security settings in your profile, and I highly recommend you download your whole profile. I did that yesterday actually, because if yeah. something goes down. You're going to lose everything, all your pictures. I mean, I don't care about the data of like where I checked in or whatever, but you're going to lose access to all your apps that are connected to Facebook. You're going to lose all your pictures. You're going to lose. Well, I mean, for me, the important thing is videos and pictures. That's what I yeah. really think about. But, and there's, I like never delete anything from my phone. So they're still all there. And then I have Amazon cloud, Google cloud, Samsung. I cloud. don't. Like my pictures I don't. are everywhere. See, I made the mistake of using Facebook as my cloud to like save all so, my pictures and stuff like I, that. Years ago, and it may have changed. I downloaded, and it was like five years ago. I downloaded everything, but it didn't. Da like I don't see pictures. It's just like a digital download. No, no. Now it's gonna like you download. Like I downloaded mine. It was like seven gigs worth of shit. Oh so, wow. Okay. Yeah, like you get all your pictures, all your videos, and stuff like that. So I need to do that again. But that's it. Okay. I don't even know how I got into this. No. Okay. So it's free. But they have rules, and Twitter yeah. has rules, and Google and has agree rules. Agree to those rules. But they did. I mean, in Alex Jones' defense, they did gangbang him. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like a domino effect. But he. Asked, That's what you get when you're so loud and obnoxious. I mean, yeah, like so. the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and you know if you're gonna squeak all the time and be the loudest, like your people are gonna pay attention to you. Let's put it this way, people: you're not even allowed to say you're not even. Okay, so for example, on fitness ads on Facebook advertising, you're not allowed to call out a person for being fat. You can't say, "Want to lose weight? Do you feel like you're too fat?" Like you get banned right away. They'll ban your ad account because they don't, they want to go. They're PC. They don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> like those ads are those days are done. I don't know about pers personal. You can get away with everything as long as nobody starts reporting you. But it's going to get to a point. Mark my words. You're going to be ranked. There's no. You, there's already a system for ranking of, of mm -hmm. you as a person on the inside. But I have a feeling there's going to be a ranking system that's going to come out for personal profiles. And depending how people rank you, you're going to you're going to start seeing people getting some kind of Facebook jail or banned or whatever. Yeah. They already put people in Facebook jail all the time, but they're not going to. It's going to take a lot to kick you out because they make money off you, but. I wouldn't be surprised if they do something. And they were already Facebook, something about advertising. They had to pay money. It was just a few weeks ago. They got in trouble for Who? Facebook. Facebook? For yeah. What? And they had to pay a fine. Now it's, I mean, it's slowly coming back to me the more we're talking about this. I would have to look it up. But, um, or maybe they banned certain advertisers. Let me see. Yeah, that's the dude. It's been hell for the past two weeks. Like a shitload of accounts have been banned. 
Like they're just banning one of my accounts got banned. Banning and I didn't get bad business now bad banned businesses, bad advertisements, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff. I'm Which you know, to a point, I don't mind because there are so many like hokey. First of all, there's too much shit in this world. We don't need like tons of items from China. Yeah. Oh, those are those are done. The drop shipping days, they're not over, but they're coming down hardcore. If those items are not making it to your door in a couple of days, you're done. Yeah. Like that's and then um like the weight loss supplements. How many weight loss supplements are out there? How many like get skinny quick or protein supplements or do you want longer, stronger, thicker hair? You know, yeah, see, you can't do those apps and you the can't, eyelashes. And there's I'm ways around it. it. There's ways around it, but you can't call out people like that. Do you want thicker hair? Like that, that won't fly anymore. So I'll ban you. Good. Like my that fitness I'm account, totally for. <laughs> my fitness account that I that got banned, they're telling me it's because I used an example of somebody not fitting into their leggings. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's like, a I wasn't real life talking... issue. <laughs> what? Yeah, That's right? That's a real like, life I... issue. And it wasn't like I was calling out the, I was using the example of like, you know, what happens when you work out and you go, like Kelly went, I didn't even say you, I said, what was the copy? The copy was something like, because I didn't even write it because I have a copywriter that does the copy and they know the rules, right? Mm -hmm. So it was something like, Kelly goes out and works out every day, but then Kelly goes home and eats like, you know, half a pizza and a fucking yeah. chocolate shake. And then she's bloated the next day and she can't fit into their leggings. That's why my account got banned. I didn't even get a warning. Usually they give you like a tap, like, hey, mm -hmm. you can't say that. And I go, why? Because of this. Okay, next, learn from it. Move on, you know, because you want to have an agency. I have to follow the rules, you know, it's yeah. a platform. But no, there was no warning, no nothing. Brand new account, only a month old. Ads have been running for like four weeks. So it was approved. And all of a sudden they just banned the account. No, no, I've been appealing it. I've appealed it like 16 times. I haven't gotten back to me. See, so that's I, ridiculous to me because you got like people spend money on this and it is a learning process. Facebook yeah. is changing things. So mm -hmm. they have, I, I think they should work better with people. Oh, yeah. In they the suck. transition. They're They're and the they worst. do. Their customer service absolutely sucks. You can't get a hold of anybody at Facebook. I mean, even when you're paying, it's super difficult. So annoying that I'm not seeing the comments come in live. See, Chris is being hilarious and I can't see him. Fake and news. we're even giving them all kinds of, you know. No, will you tip a Burger King? Right Fuck no, I wouldn't tip Hell a Burger no. King. Chrissy, you're the best. Not even for a charbroiled burger. No, she's our nugget. See, Shh. trigger. Oh man, Chrissy's the best. We can't, we can't attend to her fans live. <laughs> that sucks. We're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to wrap it up anyway. We've been rambling for like over an hour now, so. Anyway, what's next week? Do we have guests next week? Not next week, the following week, if everything works out. Okay. And who's the next? Uh... We talked about this the other day. I'm going to narrow it down and just get some material before before we put anything out there. And I'm working with them on the date still. Did you get Neil deGrasse, DeGrasse Tyson yet? I um, want him on the show. We need to get him on the show. Yeah, we spoke on the phone a few times, but he's his schedule is super crammed right now. But... Uh, yeah, we're totally going to get them on someday. Awesome. All right, cool. With that said, I guess <laughs> we're going to leave you guys. And we'll see you next week. And uh, let's see. If you're listening on whatever platform it is for audio, like iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or all the hunt, Spotify. We're on Spotify now, by the way. Woo! Uh, yeah, you can listen to us on Spotify. Make sure you catch us live on Facebook so you can interact when it works and <laughs> they're not doing, you know, updates we can actually interact with you guys and you guys can interact with us live which makes it a hundred times better and a hundred times more fun so uh anyway thank you for those of you who watched the whole thing live and i guess i'll see you guys next week that's it